This time on Captain Castle's Laboratory, we're starting off in basically the dark. This is the North Pole series from Department 56, Polar Bear Palace. And the reason I have it in the dark is uh, this is a very dimly lit piece. <laughs> I mean, very dim. Um, I think they should have gone with a 5 or 6 volt version instead of a 3 volt. That's just me. It's a lot brighter on the camera than it appears because the camera picks up the LEDs uh, much more intense. Uh, but this is a 3 volt unit. It's from 2007. And you can see the signs lit up, the bear, bear, bear. But uh oh, this guy's out. So, and then this light that you see through the windows is a actual light bulb. So if you take the light bulb out and I uh, unscrew it so it turns off, like so, you can see that's what lights up. So what we're going to be working on today is trying to replace the LED that goes here. Um, just taking a glance at it. It's not going to be the easiest. Uh, this is a ceramic piece. It is number 9,026 of 12,000, which is right there. Because um, you can kind of see up in there, there's the black hole, or the darker colored hole. That's where the wire feeds all the way up. It appears to be connected. Uh, what I was told by the person that owns this is they accidentally plugged in the wrong power supply when they finally when they realized it quickly uh, this thing had burned out so this one died and he said these are dimmer than they normally are um, this one and this one and this one seem to be pretty decently bright the sign seems to be dim but I also looked inside the way they have the LED mounted uh, through the light hole and these are directly mounted into the base this one's at an angle pointing at it so I think this one's supposed to be intentionally dimmer um, but the LEDs that are in here are LEDs that can be driven at 5 volts. So at 5 volts, these are much brighter. Um, and I actually like it that way, if it was mine. And I will show you. So I'm going to unplug the 3-volt power supply. And just so you know, it still works. And I'm going to plug in my power supply. two so same brightness this is three volts so it's the same brightness but if I bump this up to there's four and that's five and to me that looks a lot better so five volts three volts you can see how quickly it dims um, if you got this piece, you could technically increase the power. I am going to turn on all the lights now, so it's going to get bright. Woo, swap out. One, two, and let me get number three. Number three. So, as far as this piece goes, uh, the white LEDs generally can run between three and five volts. 3 volts is at the lower end of the spectrum. There's the box for those who have never seen it. So, there's the part number, 799918. So I'm going to get this off the bench. But most white LEDs can run at a higher voltage than 3. Generally they run, uh, if you want to bright, around 5. Uh, that's why you can bump this up. If you bump it up though, you got to make sure you change this bulb, because if you put this bulb, which is a 3-volt bulb, into a 5-volt five five volt socket, you will burn it out. So, and here's the little adapter, which you can read. It says 3 volts, half amp. Uh, here we go. Uh, at 3 volts, the LEDs are drawing uh, it's just like uh, a little over a tenth of an amp. At 5 volts, they're pulling almost a half an amp by themselves. So you wouldn't be able to use something this small. Uh, and I'm not telling you to change your stuff if you don't want to or you don't want to risk the chance of burning it out. So, 
But the reason it's here is got a polar bear just not working right there. So we are going to see what it's going to take to change that light or LED. Now, this is a solid cast ceramic piece. It's not like a lot of them where you can see a seam and separate it or, you know, um, find an access point. There's nothing. It is completely one solid piece. But when it was cast, it was cast with holes. So you got the holes here. This is for the signs or the flags. I have those in the box. I'm not going to take them out so they don't get lost or damaged. But there's a couple holes. I think there's like four or three flags that go on this thing. Um, not counting the ones that are precast into it. And these are... Uh, they feel like they're ceramic too. Probably a resin, hard resin. But anyhow, but if you look closely at the bears, that yellowish discoloration that you see is glue. So technically we should be able to heat these guys up and separate them. Now the only question is, did Department 56 glue the lights into the bear? Or are they just protruding through the top and glued into the porcelain or ceramic? Won't know until we try it. Now, looking in the bottom, the wire that goes up inside has a lot of slack. The one that goes up to this. So if it is glued to the bear, I should be able to pull it up and at least get a couple of inches of slack on the wire to check the LED or to solder in a new LED and then glue this back on. So. I'll get the heat gun started. Uh, this is like the one I did the other day. It's going to have to get really hot, so I'm going to start it above where I normally do, which is normally around 100 Celsius. So I'm going to start this one at 150, since I have a wide nozzle on it. Um, and we're going to see if we can get this guy to pop off. Oh, and see what it takes to swap out the LED light. So... wondering my, my hands I uh, had a can of blue glue which is used for PVC pipe uh, the dauber broke and I had to uh, use my fingers to hold the dauber so that's the blue that I couldn't get off yet to mention it in the one I filmed before this but they don't always go up in the order they're filmed so stuff wears off in a couple of days all right so I got a wide nozzle on here um, and I'm just going to go around and heat this up slowly. Uh, I don't want to heat it up too quick for two reasons. One, it is a resin or plastic polar bear. And two, this sparkly snow, it has a tendency of melting. The porcelain ceramic can uh, handle the heat with pretty much no issues. So all I'm trying to do is get it warm enough that the glue becomes pliable and I can separate the bear. And those who watch probably ask me why I'm not using my foam mat, and that's because I need to be able to twist this, and twisting this on a foam mat is a lot harder than having the base slide on the plastic cutting mat. There we go. So we got movement. That wasn't too horrible. It's like pulling out a loose tooth. And it has an alignment pin right there. And the LED is actually glued inside the ceramic. Kind of uh, annoying, but it's probably cheaper in the long run. The bottom of this is flat. If they were to bore a hole in here, two things. One, it would be brighter, and two, you would see the LED through the bottom and it probably wouldn't look as good so doing it this way probably gave it a better aesthetic appeal than gluing it through here but um yeah 150 or probably a high setting on a um non-adjustable heat pen or gun uh depending on your wattage or even a hair dryer might break this free now since the led is below this layer of glue i'm going to use a razor knife and I'm 
going to try and scrape some of it off, kind of like whittling. Just If you've never done this, just be careful that you don't slip and smack your thumb. Uh, I know the old adage is uh, towards your chum, not your thumb, but unfortunately sometimes getting good control doesn't work so well. And what's a little blood? So. So the top layer of glue, pretty easy to come off. This bottom layer is being a little bit harder. So they probably layered the glue. Uh, the bottom layer was probably a harder glue so they could um, maybe adhere the light. Then they put another layer right on top of it and smushed it together. Or it's just the way it bonded. Maybe it just bonded differently to the porcelain than the plastic since there's almost no glue residue on this. Just gonna keep scraping along, trying to scrape the edges of where the light is so I can try and either push it through into the casting of the house or pull it out. I'm probably gonna end up pushing it through, pull it out the bottom. So there's a lot of play on it. Getting it back in might be a little difficult, but we'll see. still adhered, so I'm going to heat up the glue around the LED now. So this is a three millimeter LED that has a lot of goop around it to hold it in its hole. Looks like the hole could accept a five millimeter LED.
getting it to come out the top may not be so easy based on how they glued it in. You might have to push it through the bottom and try and feed it back up. Watches the pimple poppers, like trying to pull that stuff out. Kind of interesting. Oh man. You definitely don't want these LEDs to fall inside. There we go. Oh, the LEDs starting to move. And I'm slowly getting all this glue out. Yeah, she's going to have to go down. It's free. I don't think I'll be able to get out the top because I can't get the hole clean. So, I'm going to try using the long, thin pliers and feed. There we go. Get it out through the bottom. Like that. We'll feed it out right here. And it's a three millimeter flat top LED, which is also known as a straw hat, and it looks like they made it themselves because it's really jagged, which usually means they call it, it's called cracking, where you crack the top of the LED. Right, now I can clean out the hole real quick so I can push the new one back in before this hardens. So it is a type of hot glue they're using gets really, really, really pliable with that heat gun. Again, I have it set for 150 Celsius. So if you get a uh, heat gun that has a variable adjustment, you can uh, start at that or maybe a little lower if you don't feel comfortable. Uh, let's see. Just make sure that the... There we go. want to make sure the hole is clear for feeding this back through. So now that we have it out, um, the LED is probably no good, but what I want to do is test the power coming up to this to make sure where it is junctioned inside isn't broke. Because um, if I replace the LED and it's a broken junction where all these LEDs are soldered together, that would be a waste of time. So, I'm going to plug this back in. I'm not going to lie, this has a really long cord. It's kind of nice. That's one thing I uh, like about some of the older Limax is the cords are really long. So, we should have light. We do. It's just really dim. DC. And we'll see if I can uh, get through the hot glue mess right here at the leads. I'm going to have to trim back some of the insulation real quick. Can't get the lead the poke through the glue. So we'll trim it back and then test it. Alright, that's one. Now let's see. Yeah. Uh. 
So I'm getting almost two volts there. So we do have power. We just don't have good power. Also, that's kind of cool that it has a this the removable five millimeter port. And it's not just one long cord that you can actually just separate it. So need a white LED. And that's a flashing LED. Those are flashing LEDs. Probably not what they want in here. That would be bad. Uh, one uh, one polar bear would be all the disco bear. I thought they had a couple of LEDs lying out that I I probably put them away. I'm starting to clean up my bench so I can get ready to relocate it, and I probably uh, let's see what this one is. Probably put it away. Grabbing my LED tester. There's an LED tester that was made. And uh, this LED is green. So no good. And this is a 5 mil. It's bigger. But if I reverse it, now it's red. So it's a uh, dual polarity LED. It's for switching. But the 5 millimeter LED uh, would also work inside the hole. Um, but I'll, I'll use a three. Need to find a white. That's red. Purple. Blue. Green. Yellow. Pink. Yellow. Orange. Should I start it from the left? And I always check my LEDs before I put them in because on batches they have a tendency of being bad when you get some. Uh, normally I only come across one or two and a batch like this, like all these bags here was one batch, and I think that was a uh, 1,000 or 1,200 LEDs in all these bags. These batches are a little bit better quality in the second row. Um, they're also much larger LEDs. <laughs> so, uh, But if you're going to use an LED or replace an LED, you should always test it before you solder it in. If you have the ability to, you can buy LED testers, or you can make one with a 9-volt battery and a resistor. Um, or if you have a variable power supply like I have right there, you can hook the alligator clips up to it and adjust it. So. This is going to require soldering, so if you've never soldered, um, you are going to have to solder this. It's not like you can twist it and then tape it or something. Uh, I'm going to try and show these closer to show the difference between the flat or straw hat and the regular. So if you look at the top of that LED, if you can see it, it's squared. And that one's on the ground. And that one's rounded. Yeah, it's rounded. This one I cut flush, so it's less squared. Um, it changes the focal point of the light. So rounded will be more pinpoint, squared will be more flood. And you can crack these, meaning you can make them flat top, with something 
like a pair of wire strippers. If you do it wrong though, the light won't, won't work and you'll have to replace the LED again. So I'm going to chip the top off to make it more flat. Like that. If you go too deep, it'll expose the inner core. And now you can see, maybe, you can see it's no longer rounded. Uh, if you want, you can just buy straw hat LEDs. Um, that's up to you. I just break the tops off on myself and we're good to go. Now LEDs are polarized, so if you stick them in backwards, they're not going to work. So, on this, while well, my soldering iron's getting hot, the one wire has a black stripe and the one wire doesn't. Uh, from my test, the wire with the black stripe is negative. And the wire with the white stripe is positive. Or, excuse me, no stripe, but just solid white. They also had heat shrink on here, so that the two do not touch each other. Because if they do, it's a short. And that would put an extra amount of load on the power supply that's plugged in over there. As well as the light won't work. And actually, probably none of the lights will work because leaf path of resistance. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put some heat shrink on the positive terminal, which is on an LED is the longer one. Color heat shrink doesn't matter. This was white. I'm using yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink it real quick. You can use a heat gun or lighter. You won't see it, so even though it's sooty, which you can wipe some of it off, you won't see it inside. Um, if you want to make it look prettier, something that's going to be seen or potentially seen, then I would use a heat gun. You won't get the soot from the, the burning gas. You can use helping hands on this, which are those uh, metal claw things. These might make it easier for you. I don't know if you saw those right there. Um, because this wire is so short, um, I didn't want to pull them out. I can just use it on the mat. The mat, these mats can handle quite a bit of heat and abuse. So. it with the power supply and make sure it lights up. Lights up. Uh, it could be brighter because it's outside. It's also probably a different type of LED. So let's see what it looks like inside the polar bear. Also, it's possible that this LED is a lower driving LED. I didn't read it. That was my mistake. I should have read the LED. Uh, some LEDs are 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts, and then they go much higher than that, but they have a resistor. Um, if this is going to be too bright, I can put a resistor in line to reduce the dimness so it matches these. Or, all these can be replaced. Take the heat gun and remove each one, pop each one out, and then redo it. Now, I'm not going to lie, this next part is probably going to be a pain, is getting this back in here. This is probably where I'm going to use the foam pad to help protect it a little bit. So I can see the hole. Now I just need to be able to get it up to the hole. And many tools out there you can use to do so. You can use a hemostat or um, these are, uh, this is for fish hooks. Something that can reach all the way in. 
Um, you can use articulating pliers, which I have no idea where mine went. They're huge and I can't. Oh, there. So these will fit inside and then the way they open allows it to stay a tighter area. Um, so you might need to find something you have lying around. Um, they do make super long tweezers. Those might work too. Uh, the great thing about something like this is with the uh, end, you can lock it into place so you don't have to worry about it slipping out. This is excessively long, as you can tell. Um, so I'm not going to use these. I think I have a shorter pair somewhere. Once I get my new lab set up, I'll have all my tools more organized. So I'm probably going to stick with the fish hook removers, uh, mainly because nothing here moves. It's just the end. Mild movement here, full jaw, nice and thin, nothing separates, so I don't have to worry about hitting anything on the inside. I would make sure that this is unplugged when you do it, just for the fact that most of these tools are metal and you don't want to arc them. So, here's the light. So, something like that would work. Uh, if I still have a link, I'll put them on Amazon for you. But it's fish hook removal tool. There you go. That bear is a lot brighter. You can actually see that the lights are on with these lights on. You can actually see that one. So I know that the customer um, that sent this in said that these used to be brighter prior to him plugging in the wrong power supply. What happens with an LED if you overpower them, they, I can also see that gets dimmer with the main light on. You can see a flicker. That's because this draws more power than that. Um, if you overpower an LED, they get dimmer before they burn out, and they'll permanently stay dim if you catch it quick enough. So it might be better just to heat up the other three bears and the sign and just swap all the LEDs out to this style because it's hard to see on the camera. You just see a white, hot spot the way the camera's picking it up. But this glows so much nicer. And I think that was the original intent of this piece when it came out. Because I can see the light is on with the lights on. Whereas all these still appear to be off. But I know they're on because if I cup them, I can see that this guy's on. You can see it. So, so um, like I said, he told me it was brighter. It used to be brighter. At least that's how he remembers it. So maybe what I'll do is, I'll, since you saw how it's done, I'll pause the video. I'll change out these three and this sign. I'm going to use the heat gun just like uh, before. And I'm going to pull the lights out, solder in the new ones. Um, and then we'll come back. So for this project, if you damage a light, you would need an LED. Uh, these are cold white. These may not be, these aren't warm, but they're not cold. They're probably in between in the temperature range for brightness uh, and temp. Uh, that's why this is so much brighter. But you would need LED or plural, which they usually come in packages. You would need heat shrink uh, and the ability of the solder. So a soldering iron or pen. Pen would work best because it's smaller and solder. And something to reach up inside, which again, I'm using this tool, the fish hook removal tool. But you can use whatever you have around. Um, if you really go with chopsticks, you could do a set of chopsticks. Uh, you could even put a small piece of tape on a, a skewer and stick it up. Once it protrudes through, grab the light with your finger and then pull it down and the tape should separate, especially if it's uh, electrical tape or uh, clear tape, like you put on Christmas gifts. So there's many different ways to get your light up inside. And of course, the lower you go, the easier it is to get to. And the hardest one, truthfully, is going to be this one, because there's no hole. This one, I can see through this hole here. And these, I can get through the big hole where the light goes. So this guy, 
This guy is going to be the hard one to swap out. If I can grab it with this, because this got the small jaw, while I have it hot, I might be able to pull it up through the glue instead of pushing it down into the glue, since I know this one's going to pose a problem. The rest of these, you can get from the bottom without any issues. So, but anyhow, let's leave it here for the moment. Let me uh, do some magic. I'm making this brighter, uh, and then we'll be back. And it should look so much better in the dark. Okay, we're back. It's been converted. You can see it already brighter in the uh, light. We're gonna turn off the light. And I know it's swamping out the camera, but it's actually really nice. It's a lot brighter. I wish the camera would pick it up as it is. Um, but there, they're not as bright as the camera showing. That's the problem with the camera. It's showing them as these big white blobs. But you can see they're a lot brighter. Uh, easy, 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 easy pain in the butt. Um, this one I had to get hot and then pry the LED up through the hole, cut it, solder it, and pop it back in. Because um, unless you want to do it from the bottom, you have to drill a hole with a, a porcelain bit or a carbide bit to go through the porcelain or ceramic. But... That is so much better. In person, this thing is beautiful. Really hard to see in the uh, the light or without the light. Uh, let me see if I can change the intensity of this to... Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it's a little bit better. I've uh, reduced the amount of light here so you can get a better idea here. So you can see. So, if you have this piece and you have a burned out LED, you can try and match the color. And I literally mean try. Uh, if you have this piece and you want to change all the LEDs, you can do so. Turn this light back up. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> you can buy LEDs online. Like you could change them to a different color, which would look kind of strange, most likely, uh, since it's supposed to be the snowy ice effect. And if you change them to like red, they're going to look like bloody bears, and it's not a Halloween piece. But you have options. You can change them to different colors. Make one pink, one blue, one green. I don't know why you do that, but you know, teach their own. Um, but uh, heat them up, uh, wiggle them off, or use a sponge or two pry. Uh, like I said, easy, easy, easy. Even the sign's easy. Once this guy's out, you just heat along the edge and then heat along the top, and then you just pop it forward. It's got a glue bead across the edge and a small arc across the top. Popping this one's off easy, just getting the light out to fix it's the hard part. So, but there it is. The uh, repair of the Polar Bear Palace. How to take it apart to do the lights. And then you can see the 3-volt lights on inside. So, thanks for watching. Until the next one.